So here's a very nice uh, turbo setup someone has. I don't know who, it's just a Google picture. Right. So here's your exhaust, your turbo exhaust manifold. So the exhaust from the engine is coming through these tubes. It's going into the hot side of the turbo, turning this wheel, which turns the shaft, which turns this wheel, which compresses air through this intercooler. This is actually a water intercooler, but I won't really get into that right now. Anyways, it will go through this intercooler, for the sake of argument, through the throttle body into the intake manifold, then through, I know we can't see this out of the engine, but through the runners and right into the ports. And there's going to be, you know, four fuel injectors because this is a four cylinder engine. And the cycle continues. Uh, so here's that external wastegate I was telling you about. You see how it's mounted on the exhaust manifold and it bleeds exhaust around your the hot side of your turbo. So let's say you the guy has been full throttle, right? He's reached full boost. I don't know, let's say 10 pounds. And so there's actually a hose that goes from your intake manifold all the way to, you see that little nipple on the wastegate? And that pressurizes the spring, which pushes the spring out of the way, which opens the valve inside the external wastegate, which allows exhaust gas to then bypass this hot side of the turbo. So here's what I was telling you about before a blow-off valve. Uh, what's a blow-off valve for? It stops compressor surge. Compressor surge is when the throttle plate closes after a full boost run. The throttle plate's inside your throttle body. <clears throat> so there's full pressure within this whole system here. And when you close this throttle body here, that's when you just let off the gas after your, you know, boosted run. Um, this whole area gets shut off. It's isolated because it doesn't let much air go into your engine. So this whole area would uh, experience a huge uh, increase in pressure which actually puts a lot of strain on that shaft in your turbo here because you know you can get a huge spike in pressure just within this area here everything between the turbo and the um, throttle body so what this blow off valve does is it's got a hose too that goes to the intake uh, the manifold and when this becomes a vacuum again compared to the gas the uh, boost level in here it will actually open a valve similar to the wastegate but it's for a different purpose so that's that sound you hear in turbo systems that goes as soon as people let off the gas so that's it's just helping to eliminate compressor surge which makes your turbo last longer this setup's done very well um, usually you want to have your wastegate, the uh, the inlet pipe for your wastegate coming off your turbo manifold out of place after all of your um, all your runners have merged. So this is a good setup. This will avoid boost creep. Um, boost creep is when your wastegate is fully open, but you keep building boost. So it means it's not efficient enough at letting gases bypass this uh, the hot side also the blow-off valve you want to have in between your intercooler and your throttle body you want to have the hose from your blow-off valve go to any area after your throttle body any area before and it won't work so in hooking up your turbo, you're going to have, well, for an oil-cooled turbo, you're going to have two lines, right? You're going to have a feed line and a drain line. Your feed line comes from your block. It will come from an area that is pressurized, an oil 
passage that is pressurizing your block. Some people drill them out uh, near the oil pump. Um, sometimes it requires modifying of your oil pump because your engine might not have a high enough volume oil pump to also feed a turbo. Um, and so you have your drain line as well. Your drain line just goes, it can drain anywhere. You, I've seen people just make a line going from the drain line of the turbo right into the oil pan, which works fantastic too. In setups that only use um, an oil-cooled turbo or a float-type bearing turbo, uh, want to use an oil cooler because as you can just use your common sense, I mean this turbo is heating up that oil like crazy and you want some way of just keeping the temperatures down a bit so you aren't starting to uh, maybe damage other engine parts in your engine because your oil is getting too hot or it's thermally breaking down. Oil thermally breaks down. Oil can also cook, uh, which is why you or you hear some people running turbo timers. Um, what happens is when if your turbo is hot, especially if you just did a you know couple of boosted runs before you shut off the engine. If your turbo's hot, it will actually cook the oil that's still resting inside the turbo because you've shut off the engine so the oil pump is not running anymore and circulating oil. So what happens is with a turbo timer is when you take the key out of the ignition it will leave the car running for any set time that you set it for and it will allow time for oil to circulate through the turbo and cool it down enough that when you turn off the car and there's no oil flowing through it that it won't cook the oil and not only does it cook your oil sometimes it will actually uh, cook your seals as well and that's why you see some people with you know turbos are running have smoke coming through your exhaust it may not necessarily mean because their rings are done but uh, it could mean that the oil seal is done in their turbo uh, it's also a good idea to hot, have it for to have a turbo timer for ball bearing type turbos too. It just allows the turbo to cool down a bit by having the fluid circulate through it um, before it's shut off. Ball bearing type turbos usually have not only the oil feed and drain line; they'll have uh, a water feed and drain line where water that comes from your radiator, which we can't see here, it would be, well, you'd want it behind your intercooler, right? So it comes from your engine, from your water pump to your turbo, and goes through the, the bearing, cools the bearing in the turbo, then goes back to your radiator and flows through your radiator and then back into your pump. That's usually the setup people have. Something you want to really be aware of when you or if you're going to turbocharge your car. Um, it affects a lot more things than you'd think. Um, first of all, you're, you're forcing more air into your engine. You're going to need to force more fuel too. To do that, you're going to want some kind of engine management system or a computer as it's sometimes called. There's different popular ones. There's uh, sometimes you can get a piggyback for your, or what's called a piggyback for your, EC, your stock ECU. You plug it into your ECU and you can program it. Uh, but some people like to just take, or just take everything out and start it from scratch because sometimes it's easier because you know what's going on at least. Um, Mega Squirt makes some good stuff. So does uh, Haltech, and there's a whole bunch of other ones too. But to Mega Squirt would be the most affordable one. The only disadvantage is that you don't have sequential fuel in injection with the earlier versions. They just come out with their new Mega Square 3, which is just crazy in terms of features. But uh, I actually have Mega Square. It's laying on my bed here. I'll just give you a look. It's all built. Uh, it's actually a board you get. It's a kit. You put it together. Um, Anyways, you want some kind of engine management system uh, that controls not only fuel, 
but uh, you want it to record how much manifold pressure, how much boost you have at one certain point so that it can um, modify your timing so that it, you know, because you want to have your timing retarded during boost and advanced during uh, intake manifold vacuum. So these things you can just, you know, I mean you plug your laptop into it literally and you program it all from there. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how this works, I'm going to be hooking it all up just on my bench because a lot of people have requested uh, to actually see it and see it running and I'll tell you about all the things you need to get for it like here's a wideband kit so what your wideband sensor does is it senses the amount of oxygen in your exhaust with this little contraption thingy right so what you do is you weld a bung into your exhaust that you can actually screw this thing screw this thing into and that reads the amount of oxygen in your exhaust. You should have 14.7 uh, grams of air for every gram of fuel. So it's just a ratio. Other things you want to think about when going turbo is, yeah, sure, you, you've got your standalone engine management system to, you know, squirt more fuel in, but your stock fuel injectors may not be able to hand that, handle that. So you're going to want to get some kind of upgraded uh, injectors or even upgraded fuel rail. For fuel you're also going to sometimes run out of the fuel pumps stock limitations so you're going to want to get a higher flow fuel pump and uh, even in some cases a high flow fuel tank because the fuel won't be able to come out of the tank fast enough. Other things you want to think about too is that turbocharging an engine raises its compression when it's under boost. So an engine with too much compression is going to have detonation issues. Um, that's when the exhaust gases are heat up so much from from compressing, like when the, uh, see those red things in there? Those are the pistons. When the piston goes up to the top on the compression stroke, then it compresses it so much, all the gases here, that it actually ignites before top dead center, which can put a lot of forces on engine components. Um, what you want to do for that is, especially if you're running high boost, is you want to, what a lot of people do actually is, they put a thicker head gasket in. Your head gasket is located between the head of the engine and the block. So that goes in between there, you see? So this creates a gap uh, in between the block and the head, which lowers the compression. Sometimes what people will do too is, maybe they won't even get a uh, thicker head gasket they'll just boost their engine how it is and they'll actually use methanol injection uh, I'll probably make a video on that too if people are interested in that um, methanol injection usually you'll mix water and methanol 50 50 percent and you'll actually spray that into the intake of your engine. I know you're going, oh no, you don't spray water into your engine, you're gonna hydro lock it. But it's actually a fine enough mist that it isn't enough to do anything, especially going into a warm motor. Uh, it will cool the air charge. It's similar to running a really high octane gas, which is why you see all these turbo cars they're all running or turbo motors they all need high octane gas because it stops that pre-detonation like remember what I was saying when the piston goes up and compresses stops the gases from combusting before it reaches top dead center so I'm just going to uh, 
just mention one thing before I wrap this up. Uh, a lot of people don't run standalone engine management systems or any air piggyback. Sometimes what they do is if the car has an airflow meter uh, or MAF, mass airflow meter, whatever, uh, you can actually trick it by maybe changing the amount of teeth or the resistance in it to make your computer inject more fuel. Uh, you could probably find more info on this on your car if you searched forums for it or something like that. Um, I'm only particular to the 280Z airflow meters uh, where you can actually move them off a, a tooth or so to change the amount of fuel that's being injected. Also there's other tricks you can do too, like there's other sensors you can I don't know, disable or make change the resistances of your coolant temperature and or intake temperature sensors if you have one. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend doing so because you're running a few risks doing that. If you're going to start doing that, I would recommend uh, wideband so that you know what your ratio is if you're running too rich or too lean. All right. So that's my terrible video um, I will make a video on more mega squirt stuff and I hope I didn't forget anything I probably forgot a ton of things that I'm gonna remember when I start editing this video or putting it together because I could just talk about this stuff all day alright thanks for watching